I welcome our church family in Lone Oak that joins us by video this week. A lot of exciting things happening there. Pastor Jason's doing an incredible job leading, and our, our new youth pastor, Pastor Holden, that's there. We're really excited, and I, I'm thrilled to get to, to talk to you guys today as well. One of the more interesting and challenging things about life as a pastor is that every week brings a new crisis. In a congregation of our size, most weeks bring more than one. You can't schedule crises or emergencies. They just happen. And almost every day, someone has an emergency. It's put in the hospital, has surgery, or there's a death in their family. By the way, we want to pray for you when we're in the hospital. Uh, the only way we know that you're there is if you call us or email us. If you let us know you're in the hospital, we want to care for you. Crisis is never casual. It's rarely expected. No one expects to have surgery. I've yet to meet the person who's excited to be in the hospital. They're like, man, the food here is great. It's just so wonderful. I'm so fired up. You're not there because you want to be. You're there because you have to be. You're going through the fire. Your family may be in crisis. Uh, marriage problems. Problems with your children. And you're going through the fire. While working on this message, I got a phone call from a precious lady in another city. Her grandson was struggling and in deep trouble, and she didn't know where to turn. I didn't, doesn't really even know me, but felt like God put my name on her heart to pray with her. And she and her family were going through the fire. I don't know if that term, going through the fire, is a southern term, a Yankee term, or a Bible term. But regardless of where you're from, you know what it means. When you're going through the fire, you've got a problem. You're under pressure, and it's increasing. You don't know how you're going to handle it or if you're going to survive. Some of you are there now. You're going through the fire in your marriage, with your children, with aging parents, with your health, in your finances, in your business, or maybe in a relationship. Others of you, uh, it's, it hasn't been that long since you were going through the fire. You say things like, thank God I survived that one, or I'm not sure I could do that again. As I studied for this message, I started thinking through your stories, people who made it through. How did you do it? Uh, what is it about people who make it through? What is it about them and their faith that they're able to make it through the fire? Today and next weekend, we're looking at one of the most famous stories in the entire Bible found in Daniel chapter 3, where three guys literally faced the fire. Looking at their stories, we learn important things about people who survive fires and the God who is with us in the fire. We started in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 1. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 90 feet high, 9 feet wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. This was a huge, massive statue. We've always assumed, and most historians believe, it was a statue of himself because we know he struggled with pride. Nebuchadnezzar decided, I am now God. He then summoned uh, all the officials to come to the dedication of the image that he'd set up. It was the grand opening. It's Nebuchadnezzar's big moment. Uh, he invited the leaders and the important people to all be there. So the officials assembled for the dedication of the image King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, this is what you're commanded to do, O peoples, nation and men of every language. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music, so the whole band's playing, as soon as that starts, you must fall down and worship the image of gold King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. It was an amazing, incredibly prideful moment. And what a rush. When the music started, Everyone would worship him. And just in case they weren't likely to worship, the herald continued with a threat. He said, whoever does not fall down and worship 
will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Nebuchadnezzar was serious about being worshipped. Uh, this wasn't really worship. It was forced compliance to a power-hungry, egomaniac king. Therefore, as soon as the people heard the sound of the music, all the peoples, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Well, of course they did. Of course they fell down and worshipped because nobody wanted to be thrown in the fire. So they all bowed down and they worshipped the statue. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You've issued a decree, O king, that everyone who hears the music must fall down and worship the image of gold, and that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews who have you set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you've set up. Nebuchadnezzar's men were already ticked that these captives were in control and in high places of leadership. Now not only are they in charge, but they're refusing the order of the king and they won't worship the king. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men were brought before the king and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true? Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I've set up. These guys, these three guys, were some of Nebuchadnezzar's most trusted advisors. Nebuchadnezzar said, in essence, hey guys, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Maybe you missed the memo, but let me, just in case you did, let me help you again. In a few minutes, some music's going to start, all those instruments. When that happens, that's your cue. So when it starts, worship. Bow down, put your face on the ground, and worship me. And then Nebuchadnezzar made a threat. If you do not worship it, you'll be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Nebuchadnezzar insulted their God. What God can rescue you from me? Nebuchadnezzar didn't understand this was like waving a red cloth in front of a bull. He was challenging God himself. You can almost picture God in heaven saying, really? Really? Will I be able to rescue them from the fire? Really? Come on, who do you think created fire? All right, Nebuchadnezzar, let's see what you got. God was not intimidated. But what about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were really facing the fire. This was not a good situation. And from their example, we learn what to remember in the fire. Remember, these guys who were fully committed to God were about to be thrown in a furnace and burned alive for their faith. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king after he made that big threat. Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. They didn't go get buckets. They didn't get a fire extinguisher. They didn't get fireproof clothes. They didn't run. They didn't even argue. Instead, they said, you've missed the point, Nebuchadnezzar. Your issue is not with us. Your issue is with God. And you are not who we answer to. When you face the fire, remember, God's in control. He's in control. Sometimes you spend too much time running from the fire, avoiding the fire, trying to fight the fire, instead of responding like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and simply allowing God to be God. They didn't fight Nebuchadnezzar because they understood that God was and is in control. It's one of the themes I see in amazing people of God who make it through difficult circumstances. They are committed to following Jesus even if fire comes. In fact, if your commitment can't stand the fire, you're not very committed. It's kind of like marriage. You stand before a preacher and you make some promises. You, you repeat after him because you can't memorize it. A lot of people try to memorize their vows. I always laugh because on that day, they're not, they don't even know which way is up on that day. So they can't remember those. So you're repeating after 
preacher. And you said something like this, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live. When you make those promises, what you expect is better, richer, a good health and long life. You don't expect worse, poorer, sickness, and death. Now, those words you say in your wedding are wonderful. You find out if you really mean them when the challenges come, when you face the fire. When you face the fire is when you discover the depth of your commitment. Too many people make casual commitments to their spouse and to God. Make the decision, I will be committed even if I face the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king, If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, king. King, you're right. That fire looks hot. But if you throw, if you throw us in the fire, our God, not your stupid statue, but the real God, is able to rescue us. When you face the fire, remember, God is bigger than the fire. Cancer? God's bigger. Lying accusers, God is bigger. Bankruptcy, God is bigger than bankruptcy. If you've got horrible memories from the past that haunt you, God is bigger. High blood pressure, our God is bigger. Our God is bigger than stress. He's bigger than addiction. He's bigger than chronic illness. He's bigger than family conflict. He's bigger than feelings of worthlessness. He's bigger than deportation. He's bigger than marriage problems. He's bigger than depression. The God you serve is bigger than the problem you face. And all too often, when you face the fire, you lose faith. You start thinking, God, where, you, where are you? When you hit the crisis, you don't say, God can't heal me or God can't help me. But deep down inside, you begin to question. I know it looks bad. But you serve a great big God who's bigger than your fire. Decide to have faith even when you face the fire. FEMA uh, produced a powerful video about preparing your family for crisis. Pretty powerful, isn't it? It's a good lesson for us to decide right now what to do when the fire comes. Even talk about it. Talk about it as a couple. Talk about it as a family. When crisis comes, you may not have time for a meeting to figure out your response. Instead, you can respond based on your prior decision to have faith. Faith says, even though I can't see the answer, I know God has the answer. Faith says, I'll be healed. Faith says, I will be free. Faith says, God will deliver me. Faith says, I can have victory. Faith says, God will take care of me. Faith says, addiction won't win. Faith says, depression won't define me. Faith says, my children will come back to God. God's promises are true and God keeps his promises. That's what we base our faith on. And you say, well, Come on, Rod, isn't that just positive confession? Well, say what you want. I'd rather be known for words of faith than words of doubt. When you face the fire, you can have faith, but not because you say the right words, pray the right prayer, or follow a secret formula. You can have faith because you serve a great big God. Now, here's the balance point. Don't tune me out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, if we're thrown in the blazing furnace, 
the God we serve is able to save us from us. He will rescue us from your hand, King. But even if he does not, we want you to know, King, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you set up. You said, hold on, what happened to God will deliver us? Did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego suddenly lose their faith and say, even if God does not deliver us? See, I think many times we have a basic misunderstanding of faith. Many have taught that faith ignores reality. That true confidence in God denies current circumstance. And as a result of that teaching, you may be afraid that your what-if thoughts somehow frustrate God. But your what-if thoughts, in fact, are the entire reason you need faith. In essence, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, even if God does not save us, we won't worship that statue. What were they doing? They were asking and answering the what-if question. We honor them as heroes of the faith, but they recognize the reality of their situation. If God doesn't save us, we're going to be burned in the fire. And if that happens... We still trust him. Don't be down on yourself when you ask what if. God understands what you think and feel. You say, I don't think you're right. Well, then let's look at the example of Jesus who asked a very similar question. Remember what Jesus said on the cross? My God, why have you forsaken me? If Jesus is our model, and he is, then you are okay to ask questions of God. When you ask the what if question, you're merely being honest with God and defining the problem. Faith is found not in the question, but rather in your answer to the what if question. My answer is, God, even if I'm not healed, I'm still going to trust you. Even if this doesn't work out the way I want, you're still faithful. I will trust and I will follow you regardless of circumstance. What a powerful statement. God can deliver us, but if he doesn't, we're still not going to give in. We're still not going to turn back on him. If we don't get the answer to the prayer we pray, we still have confidence in the God we serve. King, we're still not going to worship you, your gods, or your statue. See, if your concept of God is, if God doesn't answer my prayers, then he's no longer God, then you've become God. You decide. You make all the decisions for God. You may not see the plan. You may not understand the plan. But God still has a plan. Trust him. Even when you face the fire. There are two important components to the equation when you're facing the fire. It's not just faith. It's faith and trust. Faith is confidence in God's ability. Trust is confidence in God's agenda. We have faith that God can do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we can ask or imagine. We trust that God knows what's right and God knows what's best. We have faith that God can deliver us from trouble. We trust that our light momentary afflictions aren't worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed. We have faith that hard times will come. We trust that God will see us through. Make the decision, even when I face the fire, I'll trust him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made a short speech declaring faith and trust in God. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. They were no longer favorite followers and loyal leaders. In that moment, Nebuchadnezzar decided that he hated them. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, I'm not sure why we get the whole outfit here, but we do, turbans and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. It's a great story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego declared their trust in God. And what you expect next is, and when the king threw them in the fire, God sent angels 
Just before the men got there, angels dressed in ninja outfits attacked and killed all the soldiers. Then the ninja angels went after Nebuchadnezzar and threw him in the fire. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego tore down the statue and became rulers of the world. Wouldn't that be a great story? Sometimes, come on, tell the truth. Sometimes don't you pray that God will send ninja angels after your enemies? I do. Not, not after you. <laughs> I don't know. That would be a great ending, but there are no ninja angels. After their faith and trust in God, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego still ended up in the fire. You're not going to like this point. But when you face the fire, remember, sometimes things get worse. Remember last week? Daniel stood up the king, got thrown in the lion's den. Now it was their turn to stand up the king, and it went really wrong. They were thrown in the fiery furnace. Right here is where you often give up. Your thought is, wait a second, God. If I take a stand, everything's supposed to go right. Instead, I'm in the fire. Thanks a lot. This is when you get overwhelmed. It looks and feels like there's no way out. At this point for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there, there was no decision to make. In fact, their decision of faith and trust is what put them in the fire. Is, is that possible? Would God do that? After you declare your faith and trust, would God still allow you to face the fire? Because we're Americans, we believe that anything puts us, that puts us in the fire must be wrong. It must be of the devil. We think difficulty is because we lack faith, it's an attack of the enemy, or it's the wrath of God. But the fact is, sometimes doing right puts you in the fire. Or in the case of Jesus, on the cross. Where were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's friends now that they're in the fire? Was anyone standing with them? Not a chance. Everyone else, they were bowing down to avoid the fire. And then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement. Now remember, this is the same guy who just a few moments ago said, what God can say to you from that fire? And he asked his advisors, hey guys, weren't there three men we tied up and threw into the fire? I mean, I don't know if it's early onset dementia. I mean, it's just seconds ago. I mean, he knows how many people were thrown into the fire. And they said, yes, king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. I mean, I love that part of the story. In spite of their faith and trust, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went to the fire. But in the fire, they found God. God who many people thought had deserted them when they got thrown in the fire, was in the fire all along. Here's what I want you to remember. You're not alone in the fire. God has not forgotten you. God has not deserted you. Your faith wasn't for nothing. Your trust wasn't in vain. So many times, in so many ways, people tell me, I discovered God in the fire. It's the story Pastor Dave Richard shared a few years ago. When he had kidney cancer, he had faith for his healing, that he'd be supernaturally healed, the cancer would be gone. At the same time, he had trust God would be with him. And you look at Pastor Dave and his life, and you say, Dave deserved instant healing, right? You know what he got? He got surgery to remove his kidney. And he shared his story that in those quiet times, lying in his bed recovering, he discovered God in the most intimate moments of worship in his life. Pastor Dave discovered God in the fire. Last year, Cindy was diagnosed with cancer. You prayed with us. We were ready for an instant miracle. Instead, Cindy had surgery. But through that journey, she was able to share her faith and share her trust in God with hundreds and thousands of people. And we discovered just how faithful God is. He walked with us through that fire. A few weeks ago, Cindy had her one-year scan. I'm happy to report still no cancer.
The Lord is faithful. But we have the discussion every time she goes to get the scan. If this scan shows no cancer, the Lord is faithful. But if it does show cancer, we still trust him. And he's still faithful. Cancer doesn't change the faithfulness of the God we serve. Listen to me. The God you serve will be with you in the fire. He will take you through the fire and you will discover God in a remarkable way right there in the fire. Here's the big question. I think we all agree at some point everyone's going to face the fire. I've just never met that person who life was a cakewalk the whole time, never had a problem, everything was great. Who are you going to trust in the fire? You going to trust your money? Oh, that burns up in the fire. Your attorney, he could be there with you in the fire. Your position, is your position, that, that do you any good in the fire? Your power, your talent, your ability, does that make any difference in the fire? How about your drinking buddies? Are they going to be with you in the fire? Who's going to be with you in the fire? You serve a God who has promised you he will be with you in the fire. He will, he will be with you and walk with you through the fire. What a powerful story of faith and trust. Faith, our God will deliver us from the fire. Trust, even if he doesn't, we will still serve him. And we will still believe that he's almighty God. Would you bow your heads with me? And I want to pray for you if you're going through the fire. If you are in a situation it's with your health, with your finances, with your marriage, where you're going through the fire, I want to pray for you. I want to pray this way. I want to pray that you'll have faith in the God who can deliver you from the fire. And you will have trust in the God who will walk with you through the fire. If you say, Pastor Rod, I am going through it right now. That's it. That's me. I want you to stand right where you're at. I want you to stand here in this room at our, you and Lone Oak, I want you to stand right now. If you're going through the fire, if you're watching online, I want you, I literally, I want you to stand up. I want to, I want you to connect your faith by standing up because I want to pray for you. If there's someone standing near you, I want you to go and stand with them. Put your hand on their shoulder or put your arm around them. If you don't know them real fast, introduce yourself because it's just good to know who's praying for you. And we're going to pray for you. We're gonna pray that God will deliver you from the fire, but we're also going to pray that you will have a trust in God who's, that's greater than the fire and that you will discover him in a powerful way at this critical point in your life. In crisis, God. People standing with you are going to pray. I'm going to pray with you as well. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for people in this room and in the sanctuary at Lone Oak and watching online who are going through the fire. Lord, I pray right now, we thank you that you are bigger than any fire. We thank you, God, that you are not intimidated by our fire. You're bigger than disease. You're bigger than depression. You're bigger than horrible memories from the past. You're bigger than confusion and doubt. You're bigger than any problem or situation or circumstance we face. Our faith is in you, God, and we pray for deliverance from the fire. God, I pray supernaturally that you would heal and deliver and provide and set free. Lord, I pray that the power of God would be on display in the lives of men and women, students. Lord, that others would see and know that God has delivered them from the fire. But Lord, 
if, if we have to go through the fire, that will not change our trust in you. We trust you, Lord, and we trust that in the fire we will discover you. Lord, as, as we walk through that, I pray, Lord, that people would discover more about your faithfulness. They would discover more about your love. They would discover a greater trust in you. God, give us the kind of trust that lets us say like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even if he doesn't deliver me, I'm still going to follow him. I'm still going to serve him because he's still a faithful God. Lord, we trust you. And we trust that you know what's right and best for us. And so we put ourselves in your hands. And like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we say, our God can deliver us from the fire, but if he does not, we will still serve him. We will serve you and trust you, Lord. And we thank you that you promised to be with us in the fire. Lord, our confidence and our hope is in you. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.